going to let you preach it. You already won't know. Yes, I'm glad that somebody knows that God is real. Yes, yes. And not only is he just real, but he's real in our soul. Praise the Lord. Father God, we come today not want to delay, Lord. We realize a lot of family got family. But Lord, we just come and just want to just lift the name of Jesus. Don't let me be seen or heard, but Lord, you speak. We pray for the Holy Spirit. The Shekinah glory. Speak through me, Lord, like you never have before. And let somebody say, Lord, I know that God is real. Yes, yes. Because He's real in my soul. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I was just telling the brothers back in the back, you know, there's a lot of things that I uh, understand. But you know, a lot of people that uh, went to Andrew, a lot of places, they can do a little bit better job than I can do. But I, I do what best for the Lord to give me. But my thing is, I, know, I, I learned lately that I love to lift Jesus. Yes. Because I realize every day as I get older and older that it's not me, but it's Jesus. Oh, yes, yes. I need the Lord. Yes, we all need the Lord. Yes. Amen. And you know, there's a text of the Bible, I believe it's safe, that we need to fall up on the rock. Yes. Woo! That rock of ages. The lily of the valley. Yes, the bright and the morning star. Yes. And that's Jesus. And Jesus said that if I be lifted up, he said, I, I will draw all men unto him. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. So today, I just come to lift the name of Jesus. And I just want to thank God on behalf of your pastor and, and giving me that opportunity to come over and to say a few, a few words of encouragement to God's people. Right. We are still battling in in Marshall, we were still getting out, doing the work of the Lord. We, uh, him last year, we, well, no, this year, the pastor had a revival. We was able to baptize the lady uh, in Jefferson, up the little city that I came from. <laughs> Amen. Like I say, this is what the Lord has shared with me to want to share with you, is that if we would find ourselves out doing what we need to do, Amen. And we also need to share the printed page. Amen. Yes, Praise yes. The Lord. If we find ourselves out doing the work that God has called all of us to do, Amen. we'll find that a lot of difficulty, a lot of trial that we go through with, and a lot of things that we wrestle with from within the walls of the church, we, we will find it disappear. It's because the more that I go out and help others, the more that I realize how much I need the Lord and how much that you need the Lord, and how much they need the Lord. So uh, I don't know about you, but I'm just so glad to be able, uh, some way, somehow, I sort of got uh, tied down just a little bit and not able to move uh, like the way I love to. Y'all know Brother Wallace. I, I like to get out. Amen. Boy, and when I get a chance, I'm telling you, I go with speed. Because I know that this is an urgency message, an yeah, yeah, yeah. urgency time that we're living. There's so much violence. There's so much, so many things that are happening in the world today. Amen. That it's not good. Amen. And I learned that we need to lift up Jesus. Yeah, yeah. And we need to lift up Jesus in the midst of what's going on. Amen. We just had a young man that I guess tried out run the police to Ed Marshall, whatever. Just took off and they uh, gunned him down, about 17 shots. And matter of fact, I had been seeing the gentleman there at Walmart, been passing me, and I talked to him and every once in a while. But you know, it's just something about death. It, you know, it, it's just strange when it seems like when people are, are moving off to that uh, uh, particular spot of death, it, we just never could seem like uh, really, you know. But him and his mama, I remember years ago, I was telling my wife and others that, uh, you know, I do little to evangelism. And I had been to his house, prayed with his mom, and she had gotten books and, and everything else. And, then, and you know, it's just amazing that, that I thought about it. I said, Lord, where can I go right now and to share this message? Because, that, you know what, 
It's such urgency time. People are dying. Yes, yes. People are dying without Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. Uh, most of the people are dying without Jesus. Without Jesus. Because when you read the Bible, they say that a faithful few. Yes. It's in the body majority. Yes. They say a few. Yes. Amen. Yes. That would find. Amen. That would be saved. Uh, consider we was talking earlier about knowing all eight people. We know that that was a uh, chromical figure that eight, uh, eight hundred, eight thousand, but it was eight people in Noah day. Uh -huh. And the Bible say that that in our time so shall it be. Amen. Uh, when the Lord come, it will be like the days of Noah. Mm -hmm. And so I tell you, church, we have a work to do. We got too much work to do to be idling and sitting in and trying to figure out why this is happening, why that is happening. Let me share something with you. The church, the Bible doesn't talk about the world. The Bible talks about his people. It is his people. It tells you, it talks about his people and how faithful a few were and how that a lot of his people was unfaithful. Yes, and so here today, I just want to talk to you just a little bit. Uh, my subject is the wildest invitation. W-I-D-E-S-T, the wildest invitation. Christ. Invitation to Christ. Amen. In John 3.16, go with me there. The book of John, if it's some of y'all that's not there. John talks about, amen, the book of John, the third chapter. It gives you uh, two or three very wonderful outlines. The first one, it talks about the new birth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Talk about Nicodemus. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Nicodemus had been around Jesus for a long time. The Bible says that Nicodemus had so much money mm -hmm. that he could, you could go around Jerusalem so many times. Mm -hmm. The man had plenty of money, had plenty of wealth, fame, mm -hmm. but then he liked and still mm -hmm. one thing. Amen. And that was Jesus. The invitation today, church. I want to let you know, Christ is still giving the invitation. Amen. He said in John 3.16, we all know that takes by heart. Amen. What is it? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So God has extended this invitation in John 3.16 to not to just us few faithful here at Sharon, but he said, whosoever believe in the name of the Lord our Savior Jesus Christ shall be saved. I'm so glad that when the writers got to write that they made sure that they put this verse and this particular word in because if it hadn't, It'll say, well, uh, just a few faithful, oh, that's shouting. Mm -hmm. Just a few in Marshall. But he say, who's an elder? Amen. Believe yes. on the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. Now, I want to shout something with you. The word believe and the word Greek mean that it's action. We have to be doers of his word, not his only. Yes. James say that you show me your faith without works, but I show you my faith with my works. We know that we can't work our way into the kingdom, but at the same time, if you got a relationship with Jesus, if you've been born again, amen, from above, amen, it's going to automatic, your light is going to shine. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. You can't make it shine, but let it shine. Yes. Some folk make it shine. Hey, the first one, when they come in the morning and the door hits them from behind, and then the, when the door's closed, and the last one to leave. See, you don't have, you can't make your light shine. Amen. To please the Lord. You got to let it shine. Amen. That means you can't teach doctrine. You can't believe in doctrine and go to heaven. You got to have a relationship with Jesus. You got to fall up on the rock and be broken. Come on, church. You got to realize that I'm nothing but a sinner. I need you, Lord. Every time I try to do good, evil is always present. Amen. Always, do, you know, I'm always doing something that I shouldn't do. Always thinking something that I shouldn't think. But Jesus is always on the main line. Yeah. Call him up. Yeah. Tell him what you want. Yeah. He's on the main line. God will fix this thing. 
I want to let you know today this invitation is, is so wide until it talks about the God's love and his mercy. Lord have mercy. Ever extended to the human race. Lord Jesus. God's invitation to accept his salvation through Christ Jesus. He's the only one. See, because I hear some folks say, my salvation, you don't have no salvation. Salvation comes from Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Salvation is something that we couldn't do for ourselves. We can't save ourselves. We are wounded. And, and if you go to Isaiah, Isaiah said we all have come short. Yeah, yeah. But Jesus has laid it all upon him. All is strife. Because of Jesus' strife, we became healed. There's nothing about me and you we can do or say to be saved. But the invitation, amen, are still today for you and I. He wants to save you and I. Just because we go to church, amen, on the Sabbath, just because we eat healthy, don't mean inspire that we have accepted the invitation of Christ. Come on, church. Amen. Praise the Lord. You got to fall up on Jesus, the rock. And you have to realize that you need the Lord. That Lord, I, I've come short. I've saved this. I've done that. But I need a relationship yeah. with Jesus. Come on, church. Yeah. We need to be born again. Amen? That's the only way we're going to make it in. Is that we got to be born from a heaven, from above. Yeah. I want to let you know, church, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. I want to share three things with you today. Whosoever means everyone, even me, amen, even the preacher, even the elder, even the pastor, amen. This extended is so wide and so high and so low until it don't miss nobody. But you know what I find that sometimes a lot of people don't accept it. Just because it's there don't mean that it's okay. You got to be willing and you got to be wanting to accept it. God has made provision for us all. Also, he said, why are you not all saved then? It's because some people are not thirsty. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, come go with me to that, Isaiah, amen, 55. Isaiah 55, amen, and verse 1. When you get that, someone read that for me. Isaiah 55, amen. Open them Bibles up to that. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 55. Everyone that thirsted, come ye to the water. Amen. And he that has no money, come ye, yeah. buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. I don't know about you, but can you go anywhere in Tyler and get these things without money? You can't do it. It's free with Jesus if you're thirsty. But see, the thing is that some people are not thirsty. See, you got to get thirsty yeah. Yeah. order to want to eat or to drink. Yeah. You see, so if you're not thirsty, you're not going to eat. You're not going to drink. That's why we do the thing that we do and say the thing we do and act the way we do and we don't get out and do God's work. It's because we are not thirsty. You got to be thirsty. The woman at the well, y'all remember the story? She kept going out getting water. Just like we are sometimes. We just keep messing up. Just keep doing wrong. Just keep uh, uh, stretching ourselves out. Stretching one another's out. Just keep on doing what we're doing that we shouldn't do. Until one day Jesus came to the well. Lord have mercy. And you know what? Jesus said, he have came right in his shadow. Amen. And you know what? He wanted to give us a dream. He said, look here, woman, you just don't know. I'll give you a drink that you will never thirst no more. So you will drink the living water that would rise up unto everlasting life. This is what we need. Amen. We know that Saturday is the Sabbath. Yeah. We believe in the Ten Commandments. Yeah. The letter. But what about the spiritual aspects of it? Amen. See, we know that the day at the end of the week, the day that Jesus went into the synagogue to worship, and he stood up and read the book in Luke 4 chapter, read the whole chapter, 
and it talks about it, but at the same time, do we have a relationship with Jesus? Do we really love Jesus? Do we have that agape love that I, I don't have to worry about turning it off and on when the pastor don't do what I feel like or the way he might feel I'm going to get all upset and turn out. Mm -hmm. Or if the elder don't do, or if the choir don't sing the way that I sing. Mm -hmm. You see, I'm going to tell you something, church. You know, we, we can talk a good talk. That's right. That's right. That's right. Right. But Jesus is concerned how straight and how narrow you're going to walk when your feet hit the floor. That's it. That's it. Come, on. Come on, Mr. Luke. I can talk about this I can tell you how when I even uh, 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 take care of myself, how I feel. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it's not about a feeling. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship with Jesus. Yeah. We need to be born again. Yeah. We need to be spiritual birth. Yeah. We need to be able to, to smile when somebody's putting us down and, and when things ain't going the way that I want it to go. Yeah. I was telling the brother in the back, the older I get, the more that I realize Everything that looks no, everything that looks bad, not always bad. All right, all right. Oh, see, cause we always talk about the good. But everything that you see that you feel ain't good, it ain't always what you think it is. Amen. A lot of times when people say things to me, mm. I want to go ahead and tell them what I think and what I feel and believe I know. Yeah. But sometimes. If you got the Holy Ghost, yeah. if you've been born again, yeah. God will have you to shut up and hold on and let him work it out. Yeah. Yeah. See, I learned that when you read in the book of Proverbs that on the way to fight fire with fire, you got to stop killing him with all of the gas and, yeah. and yeah. all of the uh, 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 diesel. Yeah. You got to take it all yeah. and let it burn until it burn out. And it's just like a recorder. When it burn out, there's nothing else to say. So we need to learn how to just be quiet and Lord have mercy. Go to Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Psalm 46. Lord have mercy. Mm, 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 mm. I'm learning how to do this, church. I'm not, I hadn't sprouted Wayne, but I'm telling you, I'm learning how. Amen. To be still. 46. What the verse here? 10. What did it, it say? Be still. Learn how to be still. That's all what I was doing. I'm not saying quit working and witness and spreading the gospel, but it's good to test. Zip it. Zip it. Zip it. Be still. And let the Lord work it out. God will work it out if you trust in him. But you got to believe in him. Because the Bible says when you go back to John, down through the book of John, you know, man, God didn't come in the world to condemn the world. He come to save the world. But I learned that because of the evil deeds, man loved to do evil. Man loved to stand in darkness. Man loved the critics. When you find people always critics, Amen. And I'm not trying to take up for nobody, but I find that, and I, I read an article, when you find people always critics and criticizing and, and, and never find nothing good, that's always everything that I got to say is bad. I, it just ain't right. And you ask them same people that do all this, how many souls have you brought to Christ? How many souls have you brought to Christ? You see, I'm learning is that you, when you find people like that, it's best to let them alone. Mm -hmm. It's because they don't mean you no good. All right. The devil comes to steal and kill and destroy yeah. and to steal your joy. Yes. <coughs> and so be careful, church. Be extra careful. Uh, you say God can come in his son into the word to condemn the word, but to save the word. Those who believe in him are no longer under condemnation, but those who do not believe in the Son of God cannot be healed and are condemned already because they don't believe. 
So even our physical healing, amen, a lot of times we feel like that we can't be healed or we're not healed. It's because we don't believe. You got to believe. That's what he's saying. You got to believe in God that he is a reward to those who diligently seek the Lord. Verse 19 say, what condemn people is not the fact that they are in darkness. Check this out. It say, but that they don't accept the light. Mm -hmm. See, there's nothing wrong with if you're in the dark. We all have come short. Yeah, yeah. But if you know that, we have to realize that we got to go to the Savior. Amen. And that's why I say we got to go to Jesus. Cry out to God. Save me, Lord. Amen. Save me. Because I can't save myself. Yeah, we need the Lord. And when you cry out, the Bible says God will bring the light. The Bible says he is the light. People don't want to be told that their nature is evil. So they don't come to the light because they are more comfortable with darkness than with light. It's just something about being comfortable. I remember when I used to live out there in that old dark world. I used to, and you know, I never really bother nobody, but I just was messing up myself. I just love to slip out and just slip in and do what I wanted to do. I was comfortable in the way that I used to live. Yeah. But I realized that I was living in sin. But all oh, one day, the Bible says in Romans chapter 2 and verse 4, say through the goodness. Yes. And the love and the kindness of God, yeah. that God draw, started drawing me to him. Yes. And from that day on, I've been walking with the Lord. Yeah. Church, that's the only way we're going to make it. Yeah. The only way that others going to make it and see the light mm -hmm. is by we walking in the light of Christ. Yeah. But those one who love the truth will come to the light to be changed. Yeah. And it will be obvious that it is done by the power of God. Yes. The word I want to talk about just for a few minutes, change. We got to have a change in our life. We got to want to have that change. Amen. The Bible said in 2 Corinthians 5.17, what did Paul say? He said, look here, old things are passed away. I hear somebody was talking about what, what we used to, what we used to come. We used to talk all that, this and that. But I'm telling you, church, it's time that we put away the thing that we used to do and to make a change. And let's talk about Jesus, how we can help somebody to come to Christ. Now, Sharon, you probably won't be doing it, but I'm just telling you as a church, as a whole, is that the peoples of God do these things. Amen. Still changing. We got to be changed. Our old life. It's got to be put away. Amen. The thing that we used to do, the thing that we used to say, mm -hmm. we got to put it away. Right. And the only way we can do that is by coming to Christ. Amen. And he said, who should ever come? Yes. He said, let him come. Yes, yes. I don't know, do you believe, but I believe that if some of us today are coming and gotten down to the crossroad mm. in our life. You know, I don't know, do you believe this, but there are some of us today have gotten to the crossroad where there is no return. Mm -hmm. You don't want that saved. Is that I done got to that crossroad and there's no return. Mm -hmm. There's no change in my life. Yes. I'm going on the way that I'm going because I feel that I'm right. Yes. But it's not about you and I. No. But it's about the Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah. I just want to read you just a little article and the pen of inspiration. And it talks about some things that it scared me when I read it. But then, too, you know, let me share something with you, Sharon. It fitted me. Mm -hmm. The book is called Message to Young People. Okay. I want to say to the young people that the enemy are doing all he can right. to turn your heart away from Christ. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he is. He's got all kinds of stuff out there to change your life. And don't get me wrong. Uh, I don't have a problem with technology. But Satan have took technology 
And he hath blinded the minds right. and the hearts of God young people. Right. They don't even have time to speak to you. Right. They just constantly doing this. Right. I'm getting afraid to be on the road. I seen a lady the other day, but I pulled up beside her there on 59. She was doing this. And I'm driving beside her by myself. It's dangerous. They good to have. But also, we don't, we don't bring these to church no more either. <laughs> they don't, we don't bring Bibles no more. We use the phone. I had to get on some of the young folks there at Marshall. They, they say that they were using they wind up over there playing games. I said, that, I said that's not the Bible. Amen. Watching cartoons. <laughs> Doing everything, all sorts of things. And the parents a lot of these things. <coughs> In the house of the Lord. And we're talking about brothers and sisters who will allow our children mm -hmm. to come in the house of the Lord with these kind of machines Amen. and get on them in the church. But me personally, I'll tell them from the pulpit, yeah. you know, open your Bible. Amen. Open your Bible. I know you got a Bible on your phone, yeah. but let's open my Bible. If you need one, I'll get you one. Yeah. We need to read the Bible. Yeah. We need to learn of the old path. Amen. Amen. We need to go back. Amen. Because we have gotten away yes. from God's word. Amen. We're just living all kinds of ways. Yeah. And expect the Lord to save us. Yeah. But God is not going to save us like that. Yeah. He's going to save us from our sins. Yeah. I, was reading in, I was reading in the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Amen. The Romans chapter 10. And all we thought about it and wonder why Paul would always start out. And he would talk about uh, brothers, my most honest desire, and constantly proud to God that all Israel to be saved. But he said, I'm the first to acknowledge that they are they have a zeal of God, for God, but it's not based on true knowledge Come on. and insight. They don't seem to understand what God has done to put them right with him. Too many people are trying to earn their way into heaven instead of depending on what God has already done for them. So our brothers and sisters, we is going to have to learn that this journey that we are living and that we talk about, it's a faith journey. It's a journey that we got to believe it when we don't even see it. Even when we can't trace the Lord, we got to believe that he is are rewarded that those who diligently seek the Lord. You'll find it in Hebrew. Amen. Chapter 11, verse 6. We got to believe that God is our reward to that those that diligently seek the Lord. I believe in the Ten Commandments. I believe in them. But I believe that not just the letter of the law will save you. We need the spiritual aspects of God's law. And he said, I will put my law, where? In the past. In your heart. In your heart so if he put it in our heart, we ought to be able, amen, to believe this. We should step out on faith. We should know that what God can do. I don't care what situation are going down within the wall of God's church or whatever the situation when people talk about praying for somebody, the church ought to be able to say, let's stop, let's pray. Mm -hmm. We ought to be able to pray and we ought to be able to hear, amen, even on TV about people that were sick that the church prayed for. Yeah. So they just got up and got their clothes and just walked out. But see, we don't believe that. We talk a good talk, but we don't walk what we believe in. Yeah, we got to walk what we talk about and what we preach about. Yes, I don't care who it is. It, that goes from the bank all the way up until the baptism pool. Yes, God has given us an invitation. Yes. He's given it so wide, amen, that nobody can don't have to be lost. Nobody. We be lost because that we want to be lost. To be lost. There's nothing we can do to earn this particular right. Jesus has already paid it all. Yes. He died upon the cross. For you and I, yes. over 2,000 years ago and more, we don't have to worry 
about this situation. God has got a back. But you got to believe in it. Because if you don't believe in it, it's no good, church. You got to believe that whosoever mean anyone. Act 10 and verse 43, what do it say? Act chapter 10 and verse 43. Act chapter 10 and 43, what do it say? Chapter 10 and verse 43, read that text for me. To him give all the prophets. Yes. Amen. So whosoever believe upon the Lord shall receive remission for their sin. Jesus will forgive us, cleanse us. Go to 1 John 1 and 9. We ought to know that by heart. The Bible says that if we do what? Confess our sin. Amen. Praise the Lord. But look here, church. We got to make sure we get it right. We can't just be playing game with the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Amen. We got to be real. And the Bible says that God will not only, amen, we confess, forgive us, but he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. But now you got to what? Believe that. Who's an elder? The invitation has been extended today that to them that will come. Let me read this article. Man, it will blow your mind. It's in the book that's called Christ Object Lesson. Amen. Christ, object lesson. Page 237. 237. Every time you refuse to listen to the message of mercy, you strengthen yourself in unbelief. Every time you fail to open the door of your heart to Christ, you become more and more unwilling to listen to the voice of him that speaks. You diminish your chance of responding to the last appeal of mercy. Mm. Let not it be written of you as ancient Israel. You remember the story of Ephraim? Yes. It's John to Isle. Let him alone. Mm -hmm. That's what he's saying. Let him alone. Mm. We don't want to get that away. You don't want to hear those words. No. Paul say 417. Let not Christ weep over you as he wept over Jerusalem, mm -hmm. saying, How often would I have gathered my children together as a hen does gather her brood under her wing, and you should not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. You find it in Luke chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. We are living in a time when the last message of mercy, the last invitation is being sounded to the children of men. The command, go out unto the highways and the hedges and reach it finally fulfillment. To every soul, Christ's invitation will be given. The messenger are saying, come for all things are now ready. Heavenly angels are still working and cooperating with human agency. The Holy Spirit is presenting every inducement to constrain you to come. Christ is watching for some sign that will betoken the removal of the boat and to open up the door of you and my heart for his entrance. Mm -hmm. Angels are waiting to baptize right. of heaven that another lost sinner has been found. Has been, has been found. Yes, the host of heaven are waiting, ready to strike the heart and to sing the song of rejoicing mm -hmm. that another soul had accepted the invitation to the gospel feast. And that's why it's so important that we go out yes, and we yes, do uh, for the 